I know it's been a while, but today we're back in the workshop with the DB1 robot. I'll bring you up to speed on the status of the DB1 project and show you some sample code. I'll also introduce you to the DroneBot Workshop Forums, a new way for us to work on our robots together. We're getting up to speed today, so welcome to the workshop. Well, hello and welcome to the workshop, and it has been a little while since we've got together, and I do apologize for that. I got sidelined by a bit of an illness, and then when I got back on my feet, I had a backlog of things that happened when I was ill, and I'm trying to get everything together still. So I'm still not quite together, but I did want to get an episode out and say hello to all you folk, and let you know what's been going on with the DB1 robot, because there has been some progress made since we last spoke and also to let you know about a couple of brand new ways that we are going to go forward with this project, ways that you can get involved. I've been talking about doing something like that for a while. Well, one thing I have done is I've actually gone ahead and done it. So there is a lot to cover today. Now, last time we got together, we were working with the motor controller on the DB1 robot, and I still am working on the motor controller, but there have been some developments on the controller, and I want to share those with you. Now, first of all, I have been writing some code, some test code, in order to drive the motors and to also accept commands from I2C. I'm going to show you a small snippet of test code today, just because I wanted to go over how to code something specifically with you. I'm also also adding a couple of extra parts to the motor controller and yes I am going to rebuild it with an 18 mega 328 so for those of you who've been following faithfully and now have a controller that is built with a couple of nanos I do apologize however everything we're doing will still work with the nano uh, controller and you can add the extra circuitry I'm adding because I'm adding extra circuitry external to your controller board if you don't want to build it all over again. I'm still using the nanos for development but my final board will be built on an 18 mega 328 and I may even make a printed circuit board for it to make it easier for you folks to build one yourself. Now one thing I'm going to be doing as I said is adding a couple of components. I'm going to be adding two things to the board in addition to the two 18 mega 328 chips. I'm also adding a chip that has a number of OR gates in it. And I'm adding another chip that is a non-volatile RAM chip. Now the OR gates are going to be used as part of the emergency interrupt system. Rather than connecting a number of lines in parallel, I want to connect them through OR gates so that they're all isolated from each other and I can get a signal from different parts of the robot to say, emergency stop, let's stop the controller. The reason for the non-volatile RAM is that I want to be able to save some of the motor settings. Now, as I'm building this with one specific motor and uh, motor controller, etc., all of my settings are pretty well standard for this motor. I have the settings for the number of pulses per revolution my encoder will give out. I also know the diameter of my wheels, but you may be building a robot that uses different motors or a different encoder or has a different diameter wheel. And so those are things that you would have to change in code normally by setting the value of some constants differently. Well, I want to be able to actually be able to configure the motor controller. Also, the last time that we got together, if you remember back then, we talked about acceleration. I had an acceleration routine I was using in a deceleration one. And a lot of people have commented, you know, this would work better with a table than it would just doing a, a step, a linear step. And acceleration isn't necessarily linear. And I do actually agree with that. I just haven't done it. And so if you did decide to change the code and use a table, for example, you might want to have some specific acceleration values for your motor, some specific PWM points you'd put in the table. Again, you could put that in non-volatile RAM. Now I'm going to cover the use of this NV RAM chip as part of a regular DroneBot workshop episode so that we can all learn how to use the NV RAM before I hook it up. Basically, it's a device that uses an I2C bus, and so we're actually going to have three I2C addresses on the motor controller board, one for each of the 18 mega 328s, plus this NV RAM. So I'll be showing you the design of that 
very, very soon because I'm building it right now myself. Now, another thing I wanted to discuss, and this is actually the big announcement. Some of you already know about this because you subscribe to my newsletter. But if you don't subscribe to the newsletter, it is something I've been talking about for a while. I've finally gone off and done it. We have a forum here at the DroneBot Workshop. And what I want to do is show you what the forum is like. I'll give you a little sneak peek of it. But more importantly, get you to join the forum. Because now we can dialogue and communicate about DB1. And other people can start working on the project as well as me. And I think that'll make it go ahead a lot faster. So head off to forum.dronebot.com dronebotworkshop.com. There's a link below the video as well for that. And sign up for the forum. Of course, it's absolutely free. And you can start dialoguing. Now it's been on for a little less than a week. We've already got a couple of hundred posts. A lot of them are really interesting. There's some very interesting people I have out of my audience. And so I'd like you to meet them all. So please get on to the Dronebot Workshop forum. Another thing I'm going to be doing is putting the code on GitHub. Now, one thing that kind of delays this project is we've come to a point here where we have a motor controller but now we have the program it so everything is kind of halted and uh, we haven't gone forward with anything because we're programming the controller now we'll probably still be programming this controller for a little while so what i'm going to do is start putting the code on github we can work on this offline we can get enough code to just keep on moving with the project and other people can contribute probably better code than what i can write that acceleration is this a specific example of it and so by going to GitHub, we can start collaborating. So I will be announcing the address of the GitHub repository very, very soon. Right now it's a private repository, but in the next few days I will make it public. So before we go on and discuss how we're going to move the project forward, what I want to do now is show you a little bit of code. Now this is the code basically for the move PWM function that the motor controllers are using. And what I want to show you specifically is not so much how the code works, but how you code a function with optional parameters. So let's go and take a look at that right now, then we'll take a quick peek at the forum. Now before I show you a little bit of the code that we're using in the motor controllers, I want to go back and take a look at this chart that shows you the different commands the motor controllers is supposed to accept. Now the one we're going to look at today is the first one, move PWM, and this is the command that will move the motors at the speed specified by a PWM number from 0 to 255. So if we take a look at that command, which is the first one on this list, we'll see that it has two requirements required parameters, the speed in PWM and the direction in PWM. But then it has three more parameters that are optional, the time, the acceleration time, and the deceleration time. Now how do we configure optional parameters in the Arduino? Well let me show you that right now. So here we are down at the move PWM function. This is within a sketch that I'm using to test some of the motor control functions. Now the move PWM function, as it says, requires a speed and direction parameters and an optional runtime parameter from one millisecond to 60 seconds. And if it's set to zero, then it just means keep on running. An optional acceleration parameter, also from a millisecond to 60 seconds, zero equals none, and the same for deceleration. So when we create our function, we start off like a regular function, but you'll notice in the parameters for the function, in the inputs for it, we have a couple of differences. Now we have the speed over here, an integer, SPP, that we've defined, pretty normal. Also the direction, an integer, DR. But now for the time, an integer, TM, and we give it a value of zero. So this is the default value if this function does not get called and specify a time. Same for the acceleration and the deceleration. Now one thing about doing this, if you are going to create a function with optional parameters in the Arduino IDE, it is important that the function is declared before it is called. If you do not declare it before it is called and you leave out some of the optional parameters, you will flag an error message. So when you're writing this in your Arduino code, 
always make certain that you define the functions first. Personally, I define the functions at the top of the code and then call the setup and call the loop. You can also make one definition just for the function and not define the entire function itself, but there's no point in doing that. You may as well define the entire function first. Now we'll quickly take a look at the code over here. The first thing we do in all of our functions is check the motor status. Now motor status is a number that goes from 0 to 9 and determines what the current status of the motor is. Status values of an 8 or a 9 indicate a stop or an emergency stop. So we always check this. If the value is above 2, then we're in some kind of a stop condition and we do not wish to run this code. But assuming the value is less than 2, then we'll go into the code. And the first thing we do is set the status to 0 so that we know that it is busy. And then we go and check a number of the values coming in. We want to make sure that PWM values are only between 0 and 255, the direction is just between 0 and 1, that the time does not exceed 60,000, which is 60,000 milliseconds or 1 minute, and that it doesn't also go below 0. Same deal for the acceleration. The next thing we do is we set the motor direction because that's pretty standard. Now we have to check if there is acceleration specified. So if the Excel value is greater than zero, we call the motor Excel function. Now we looked at this function in one of our previous episodes and many people commented that there would be better ways to do this function and I entirely agree by the way. One method that was suggested was to use a, sta a table excuse me, instead of a linear acceleration like I I'm using right now, just using an increment. Another point is that acceleration usually doesn't start at zero because the motor controller doesn't really move the motor until the number is hovering around 50 or 60. So there are better ways of doing this, but the beauty about writing the code this way is that motor excel is a separate function. If you wish to rewrite it and improve it and use, for example, a table, you can do that and you wouldn't have to change this code. And so in this case, if we do require acceleration, we first run the motor excel function first to bring the motor up to speed. Then we check if there's runtime specified. If the time is greater than zero, then we have to actually run for the runtime. And you'll notice that we're using the millis command in order to specify the period as opposed to a delay. A delay basically halts the Arduino and says, don't do any processing right now. Whereas the millis command only measures the number of milliseconds since the Arduino has been reset or powered on. So if we read the millis value and read it later and do some calculations, we can calculate a period without stopping the Arduino. Now we go and check for deceleration afterwards, and if deceleration is required, then we go through and call the motor decel function. And again, it is the same thing as I mentioned before. If you wish to improve this function by the use of a table or an algorithm, you can do that and still keep this function that we're running intact. And then after doing everything, we will write the speed to the motor driver. Now this else statement is part of the, if we are running the motor for a set period of time. If we aren't, we're just going to do an analog write to the motor forever and ever. And then when we're finished, we're going to set the motor status to 1. This is the else statement over here at the beginning, which if it were to fail, will just set the motor to a stop. And so that is the function for move PWM for the motor driver for the DB1 robot. Now here are the new DroneBot Workshop forums located at forum.dronebotworkshop.com. And if you go into the forum after accepting the cookie agreement, you'll see it's a fairly standard forum layout with a number of different categories. Now down over here, we have a category for the DB1 robot project under robots. And under DB1, you can just generally comment about DB1, or also subforums for the navigation layer, the sensor layer, the intelligence layer, and for the individual episodes and articles. 
Now there are also places for other robot projects. So here's a place where users can display their other non-DB1 robot projects as well. And of course you can ask questions of other members, etc. The forum is really going to be a great way to communicate both the robot project and for the other dronebotworkshop.com projects. Now in order to join the forum, all you need to do is go to this register tab over here and you will be asked for a username and an email address. You'll have to click on these agreements over here and click register. You will be sent an email message that has a link so that you can set a password. Once you do that, you can log into the forum. Now, if you have any problems receiving the email, please just shoot me a quick email at info at dronebotworkshop.com using the same email address you were trying to use, and I'll get you set up. And so there you go, a very quick introduction to the new DroneBot Workshop forums. I really hope that you join. And so again, I really implore you, please become a member of the forum. It's going to be a great way to dialogue about the DB1 project, as well as all of the other things I cover on the workshop, and also electronics and robotics in general. You can show off some of your own robotics creations and other devices, and get advice from people on things that may not be working too well, or offer your own advice. So please sign up for the DroneBot Workshop forums. Now, next time we get together, we're going to start working on more of the navigation system. And I want to let you know about a few of the things that are up and coming. Now, our navigation system is going to need to use sensors. Now, these are sensors not only on the base, but on other locations in the robot as well, because we need sensors at the top and in the middle and on the sides and that. So we'll start talking about sensors and how we're going to actually hook them up to the DB1 robot. Now, a lot of that hookup is going to be done through I2C, and there are a number of considerations for using I2C in a project like this, where we're doing a lot of wiring that has to go long distances and sometimes past electromechanical devices like motors and things. And so there are a few considerations for I2C, so we definitely need to talk a little bit more about how we're going to implement I2C in the DB1 design. Now, there is is also the code that we're going to need to use to control the controller using the Arduino Mega and to also get input from the sensors. And I want to introduce a concept to you that you may or may not be familiar with, something called edge computing. I'm actually going to be introducing that on the main workshop channel as well too. And this is something we're going to be using around over here. And then finally, we're going to have to at some point soon deal with the batteries and the charge Thing. I've already pretty well determined what it is I want to do for batteries for the DB1 project, and so I'll share that with you, as well as doing some episodes on the regular channel, because using lithium-type batteries is a very important subject for everyone, not just robot builders. So until we get together next time, uh, this will basically be today's episode. I know we didn't cover a lot about the development of the robot, but I just wanted to bring us back up to speed. I also want to let you know that it being summer right now there is a chance that there may be a Thursday that I'll miss here and then for example my favorite event of the whole year the Montreal International Jazz Festival which is the world's largest jazz festival is starting at the end of next week and I'm going to try to get some robot stuff out then but I may end up skipping a week so please don't panic and now that we have the forum we can continue to stay in touch now of course if you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel please go ahead and do that and that way you'll know when the new videos do come out and also head over to the dronebotworkshop.com website you'll find articles on all the previous iterations of the db1 project plus other projects and you can sign up for the newsletter so we can stay in touch that way as well so a lot of stuff to do again i'm sorry for the delay but it is good to be back with you and i hope to see you again very soon here in the dronebot workshop so take care of yourselves Goodbye for now.